Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever time it is when you're watching this. It's some good education news from the Utah Education Network. I'm Katie Blunt, Education Technology Trainer at UEN. In this show, we're sharing some good news about what's happening with education in Utah. Our sixth episode focuses on good news stories from Utah's world of higher education. College-aged people account for 24% of Utah's positive COVID-19 cases, which means that many students will need to quarantine during the school year. At Utah State University, they have created a special COVID-19 Canvas dashboard, allowing faculty to see which students in their classes need accommodations due to quarantine or isolation requirements. Now that's innovative. The time teacher or professor were taking, digging through the email, trying to find a student and coordinate all those information and know what to do with this specific student and this specific student. That's why we decided, okay, let's try to make life easier for the teacher in this manner. On February 4th and 5th, juniors in South Summit School District participated in an all-virtual Higher Ed Day. It was an opportunity for students to explore colleges, universities, and technical schools throughout Utah and ask questions about life after high school. Just in time for Black History Month, the Utah Museum of Fine Arts at the University of Utah has opened a special exhibit titled Black Refractions, Highlights from the Studio Museum in Harlem. The exhibit explores the impacts of systemic racism on art, as well as the role of museums in today's society. If you're looking for a glimpse into Black art history, be sure to visit the Black Refractions exhibit before it closes on April 10th. Navigate to umfa.utah.edu to download the exhibit toolkit designed to help educators discuss the exhibition in K-12 and university classes. The 2020-21 school year has brought unique challenges and opportunities to Utah's world of higher education, just as it has in K-12 schools. We've invited the student body presidents from four of our state's colleges and universities to share what life has been like on their campuses this school year. Joining the conversation are Penny Mills from Dixie State University, Matthew Griffin from Snow College, Newman Conte from Southern Utah University, and Sione Siaki from Utah State University Eastern. Education at all levels has been impacted by COVID-19 for sure this year. What other challenges and solutions have you worked through during this year with COVID-19? The challenges here at DSU, I think last semester, a lot of students would just stay in their apartments all day. Um, and again, like people that moved to Southern Utah, we love to be outside. We love to go and do things and to get our vitamin D. But in order for us to do that, we have to be outside, you know? So for them to be stuck inside all day, that really had an impact on mental health, um, in my opinion. And so some solutions that we found for this semester, uh, we decided that it would be best to try and get more students back on campus. And so far that's been really successful and everyone has been incredible with following guidelines, wearing their masks, communicating with their professors. So that's just something that we've done here at DSU. Just to add on that, I think forcing um, state mandates been really challenging because a lot of people have a different take on, you know, uh, masks being required, you know, inside the buildings, you know, social distancing, you know, no, um, social events, especially off campus, etc. So that's been really hard for a lot of students doing in, in events, you know, in the same uh, safely way. Um, concerned about the mental health uh, of the students and the faculty, 
as well so that's been really challenging so some of the things that we are doing that's been really helpful for many students is virtual counseling you know we have our caps counseling team here uh they holding the um, office hours and you know taking all the appointments online and that's been really helpful for students so they don't have to miss a class or leave a class or really you know they can just book appointment and stay in the um, dorms and or apartments or home just to do those so that's been really helpful for our students i think penny and both newman said it best where mental health has become one of the biggest problems for our campuses right now in for snow college it's absolutely no different We've done, we've done tremendous work in trying to help market our wellness center and the wellness advocates that work for the wellness center have done an incredible job at reaching out to all the students on campus that really do need help. I mean, it's tough. Yeah, I just want to, to just um, reiterate as well that, that really the main focus um, for us as we all work together, all the student body presidents, I mean, the main focus for us is to make sure that our students are taken care of and that they're well. And I mean, the, the safety of our students is the most important um, goal that we have as student body presidents. And so we take that very seriously. And so we consider that when we when we think about these events and these activities and um, everything that we all the challenges that we've had to overcome this school year. So, Thank you. That's amazing. And I, I love the thought of every entity in the um, college or university coming together to support students in that way. So what have you seen instructors specifically do? Um, especially as they may have had to go to online or hybrid teaching models. How have they reached out to the student body? I think um, being more uh, available and encouraging the students, um, our faculty uh, have done a really good job on that, you know, more outreach and being creative about their teaching, uh, making learning more exciting, you know, because if we are on Zoom or it's just different, the faculty gotta find a way, how can I make this enjoyable for, you know, for my students to jump on and participate and ask questions, you know, commenting each other, you know, having a good discussion, you know, collaborate. And I think our faculty has done a great job in that. So I'm really grateful for faculty caring about students' well-being and giving extra time and encouraging and adjusting things to make uh, to meet the students' need. It's been wonderful to watch. Nothing makes a student feel more valued at a college than recognition or to be looked after by a college professor. I can't think of anything. Classes are recorded so that way you can look back, you can look at notes, you have opportunities to meet with professors out um, during their office hours. So Snow College administration has done an exceptional job in making sure that if you do get sick with COVID or any other things happen, that professors are available. And again, I think professors to make sure that they deserve the credit they deserve, have done an excellent job in making sure that students recognize that they're cared for. Um, I, I think I've even seen a shift just from last semester to this semester. I mean, we're only a, a few weeks in, but I can already tell um, after that first kind of initial uh, work through of fall semester, I mean, um, there were so many things we had to work around and so many issues we had to work around moving on to, to virtual. And so I've already even seen the shift now of faculty being able to share more resources for students that are available um, within their syllabus and different um, ways throughout the class and so I, I think even now I've seen the shift of, of okay now we're, we're starting to understand how to navigate and operate doing this virtually and so that's been really cool to see as well. That is so great to hear and, and again it, it makes me just picture this big team as you said reaching out to, to students and just working together through through all that has been thrown their way and um, and I think um, that will change things moving forward as well. We've been able to see, as you mentioned, some of these creative practices, these new ways to connect with professors and just this sense of caring that I, I hope, I don't think will go away. So that's really, really neat. So speaking of bright spots, <laughs> I think we've hit on some good things that have come along despite the challenges. What are some other bright spots that you've seen throughout the year? To name a bright spot that Snow College just recently had uh, last week 
Um, we, like other colleges, um, of my knowledge, we were really struggling getting students tested. So what we did here at Snow on Snow Campus was we created raffle prizes, um, different kind of events centered around testing because we have testing available every single day here besides Sunday. And we wanted to make sure that students had the opportunity and that they knew how to get tested and kind of all the things that go into it. And we had approximately 80% of the students on campus uh, got tested for COVID-19. And I think why that's a bright spot is we, for the, only, for the whole week, we only had nine new COVID uh, cases. So I just think that that makes me as a student body president very proud because now I know that they're taking care of themselves that masks are being worn, um, social distancing is being acted upon. And to watch a lot of the students at Snow College do something like that, um, it, as long as, and even like getting tested, just because I know how difficult that can be for some students, because the only incentive they really have is to get locked in their room for, you know, for 10 days or whatever. And, and so to see them react the way they did in such maturity and such grace, I made me as a student body made me as a student body president uh, very proud to be a Snow College student body president. I think for SEU, just to add on what uh, Matthew just said, you know, I think a commitment, um, you know, from campus to keep everyone safe, it's been one of the, you know, uh, one of the bright spots, you know, for us, you know, genuinely care and concern for everyone's health and well-being. And that makes students' body, you know, moving and they know everybody's there for each other. And that's how we've been able to, you know, survive this year. On campus, one of the bright spots for me here at DSU is that people are warmer. They're warmer on campus, they're nicer, they're excited to be with people because they've been in isolation or they haven't had face-to-face -face contact in who knows how long, you know? I think a bright spot has been that we've been able to have difficult conversations that have been pushed away before and now, and now we can really progress and move forward. I think that that's, that's a bright spot of this past year. So. Thank you. Those are all wonderful things to be celebrated and, and as we said before, continued. Thank you. Well, our country has also been dealing with issues of social and racial justice. Speaking of difficult conversations, um, how has this impacted your campus? These are conversations that we actually have together um, within, within the Utah Student Association um, and that we're working on different initiatives as well that we're very excited about for the state. And um, so, so, I mean, these are conversations that we've had that, that as before, um, these are kind of conversations that, were, that weren't being had. And, and now, since there's been this, um, since, since we're speaking about these issues and having to advocate for the students, um, I think there's definitely been a shift in the conversations that we have in ways that we can uh, support and represent our students. Here at Snow College, what we've tried to do and what we've been very successful doing is creating different positions, such as the international student representative that helps bridge the diversity gap between students from other countries, from different areas, and also of different colors of skin. We are doing our absolute best in making sure that every student at Snow College makes sure that they feel like they're a student, that they're a student here at Snow College. We have a student focus, you know, um, those focus group uh, work with the faculty and create a better environment for uh, students welcoming, you know, and in terms of adding more diverse per perspectives in uh, a curriculum. Now, some of the things that I've been involved in, in is to uh, cultivate, uh, cultivate a better relationship with the uh, city leaders, uh, such as the mayor and the city council members and the commissioner. Uh, I also met with uh, uh, the local state legislators and to express the student experience, you know, SCU campus and I was involved with a crucial conversation with the university president to find a better solution uh, to these problems and make sure our students feel welcome and feel represented and heard. Just in general, we've talked about all these amazing things you've been involved with to overcome all of these challenges. 
And you've been doing that as the leaders, the student leaders on your campuses. So what has it been like to be a leader on campus during this crazy year? And what kind of leader have you tried to be? Just tying the last two questions together, I feel like I have really grown so much over the last eight months. Um, being the student body president, um, I feel like the type of leader that I've tried to be and that I'm, I am hoping that I'm becoming is an inclusive leader. Um, I think that it's so important to be yourself, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, no matter what cultures you're a part of or your personal culture. Um, I think that it's just really, really important to incorporate you into being a leader. And I feel like I've grown a lot um, within confidence, I guess, is the best way to say it. For me, it's been a, like, it's been really hard, but I love it. I love being a part of the solution. Uh, I love working with the people who actually care and want to move forward. I really, I really like that. And this experience has been part of the best part of my education here in the United States. And I'm just grateful for the opportunity. Um, I have to try to uh, display courage and to be patient and be creative and most, mostly and like open-minded. Uh, I look for ways to support the students, you know, um, engage with them, uh, you know, listen to them and trying to connect in a way that, you know, they feel supported and listen and care for. Uh, but I think one of my strengths is I try to be a unifier as a leader, you know, to bring people together. I can't do it my own, but we can do it. Uh, it sounds a little bit cliche, but I think it's so true uh, in a times like this. Just um, going going off of what Penny and Newman said as well, I think um, we were able to to grow. I know that I've been able to grow um, a lot more um, just by by learning more about the experiences and through the experience of of trying to figure out this difficult time for everyone and to navigate, you know, my, my own studies, my own education, um, as well as, as figuring out the best way to, to offer resources for students who are struggling. Well, if I could say one thing that I would like to be and am trying to do as a student body president, it's, it's committed to the students. And to be committed to the students in this kind of year is you have got to be adaptable. I mean, in terms of the things that COVID-19 throws at you and the restrictions and then, oh, congratulations, like you get a little bit of leeway. Oh, there's some, there's a few more people that got tested positive, so more restrictions are coming your way. But nonetheless, and as I've seen, I mean, like we, we know each other very well as student body presidents, but as I've seen this year go by, I've never seen that kind of commitment waiver for the love and the caring and the commitment we have to our student body. Thank you so much. I. I'm excited that your campuses have you as leaders. <laughs> I'm impressed and I've, I've loved hearing um, your experiences and I've loved hearing your thoughts. Thank you to all our guests for your great work at your colleges and universities and for sharing your perspectives with us on SGEN. Next up, we're checking in with UEN trainer, Jared Covilli for the current Utah weather forecast. Jared, what's it look like out there? Hi, this is Jared Covilli with your SGEN weather report. Let's go out to the weather porch and see what's going on out here. It looks like we've got lots of snow. Wow. There's your weather report. Back to you, Katie. Thanks, Jared. Here at Some Good Education News, we're not just sharing good news. We're sharing some good tech tips. Shannon Ryrie from UEN's professional development team is our tech tip teacher of the day. Hi, this is Shannon from UEN, just sharing a one minute tech tip by highlighting a cool resource that's a little bit buried in Utah's online library. So we will start at onlinelibrary.uen.org You'll get logged in, or if you are at school, it will automatically log you in. We are going to be looking 
at a resource in the Gale Reference Collection High School. So this is a resource that would be most appropriate for secondary students. Once I'm here, I'm actually just going to click on Power Search. The Power Search would search all of the databases. And I'm going to scroll to the bottom of this page and I'm going to look at this tool called the Topic Finder. This is a great tool for when you give your students a research project but want them to refine their topic or to be a little bit more independent in picking their topic. This is a great visual way to help them with that. For instance, if I'm having my students research um, explorers and someone is searching for Amerigo Vespucci. Then there's this cool graphic that comes up that you can look either in tiles or in wheels depending on what you are um, most comfortable with visually. Um, things that are red have the most resources down to things that are green um, maybe won't be as um, tightly tied to your init initial search or have um, less resources available. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on America here. And let's see if I click on Explorers Vespu Vespucci. As I'm going, this gives me a whole list of articles that are related to this um, that my students can then use for their, uh, for their research. So I know this is a quick little bite, but this can be a great way to help students get a little bit more independent on picking their own research topics but still finding resources that are credible and safe. So that is my one minute tech tip. Hopefully you can use this topic finder with your students in their research. Thanks, Shannon. I'm Katie Blunt and that's our show. For more good news stories, follow the UEN Homeroom Podcast. And if you know of any stories that we can share, post them via social media using the hashtag UEN Good News or tag our social media profiles. We'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe, stay kind, and keep learning.